All right, so it's time for business and Sandra Fenu is here and uh, there's some, you know, Yay, talk about it. The CD. <laughs> talk about the performance of the CD. Yeah. And uh, well, some Are you people excited? think it's good. Well, I'm I'm not I'm not so excited about well what do I what am I excited you about? Want to I'm excited your about money the money and get more. <laughs> Israel. Let me do business. You want to carry on with business. You carry on. <laughs> My name is Sandra Sinamafuna. I'm here for business. International media and research organization Bloomberg has rated the Ghana city the best performing currency in the world against the United States dollar this year. This is also it is also presented a stronger currency as investors await the euro bond sale. The strengthening of the city is said to be a remarkable turnaround from last year when the currency weakened by almost 13 percent. Economists with data bank courage Marty tells Joy Business the situation is largely due to the central bank's policy in the FX space. There's more in the following report. Bloomberg's rating of the Ghana city against the dollar as the best performing currency out of 140 countries has come as big surprise, following its abysmal performance, especially towards the end of 2019. Economist Courage Marty believes the Bank of Ghana's FX directives and trading is yielding positive results. We are seeing consistent spot market interventions from the central bank. And what I mean by that is that the central bank is consistently selling some level of FX on the market, on the spot market specifically, to those who really need the physical cash now and today. And that is helping the supply side. Secondly, we've also seen the introduction of FX forward auctions. And that started since last year, but it has gained ground. And why it has even gained ground this year is that in the first quarter of this year, the central bank has signaled that it will be selling a higher volume of dollars per auction um, uh, during the FX forward auctions. And that has also calmed the nerve of the market because now we don't only have injections in the sports market, we also have um, supply support for the forward market. And the forward market intervention is very critical because what it has done is that it has calmed the apprehension of people who would ordinarily have loved to hold the dollars when they do not really need it now. Mr. Martin says the effects of the novel coronavirus will have minimal impacts on the city's sterling performance against the dollar. I would rather assign a very insignificant weight to the, the, the potential effects from the coronavirus. Um, and that's because um, if, you, if you recall the measures I outlined earlier about the intervention, the increase in foreign investor participation on our bonds market and the FX inflows that it is bringing with it, that should, ask to, to, should attract bigger weight in, in explaining why the currency is the way it is. Plus also because, you know, Issues of trade relations do not just change dramatically overnight. And the corona noise started for not too long. And so we'd expect or imagine that it is too early in the day to, to think that that is a key reason why the currency is performing the way it is. I mean, there are other avenues of, of importing from China without physical presence. According to him, spare parts dealers at Abosokai, as well as second-hand cloth importers, will now be able to forecast and budget for their goods with a stable currency. I wouldn't necessarily expect price reduction because the city is stable or has um, um, appreciated. And why I wouldn't expect necessarily price reduction is because uh, when the city depreciated, uh, I'm not sure the full cost was passed on to consumers. I'm sure there were some sharing ratios. Some of the margins were contracted to absorb some of these costs. And now that the city is stable, you also expect the, the, the sellers to say, okay, I will just maintain the price where it is to recover some of the lost margins when I absorb the cost. And, but then the benefit of this is that the rate of increase in general price levels will slow down. Bloomberg's analysis indicates a cut down on travels and trade as a result of a reduced demand for foreign currency. Fred Duhos reports for Joy Business. Interesting analysis there away from the city auctioneers of confiscated vehicles of defunct microfinance and savings and loans companies are having a tough time selling some of the vehicles. This is due to concerns of limited information about the vehicles and their price tags. On day two of the auctioning process, some bidders called for a more transparent approach. A new type of Kia Rio, not the old type one. <laughs> oh, your, your, your money finish, eh? Your money finished? Okay. 
14,000 Ghana cities. No sale. The second day of the auction process was rather slow as compared to the first day which recorded a packed hall. The issues of pricing still remained one major concern for some prospective buyers who say they have lost interest and abandoned the process before the day came to an end. Joy Business has been engaging some of them. Car have to come, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, uh, uh, Corolla X. Eh? It's not about the quality, but it's auctioning. So the, the car have to come down like maybe 5,000. Eh? They will beat it. So everybody will bring his price, the prices, you understand? That's what they call it, auction. But auction, you can't come and call Toyota, uh, this in Corolla X, you will tell us it's 30,000. No, this is not auction. They are not doing auction. They are doing something for their own interest because this is not an auction they are doing. The Harris car, 22. Are you also not looking at the quality, maybe the quality of the, the car? The car is neat. The car is neat. But the car said, we didn't even see the car. But the way the process has been going, you pay half, then they'll take you where the car is. No problem. You've seen the picture. I've seen the picture. I'm okay with it because I'm mean, buying cars like that. You understand? But let the price come a little bit. At least the year is like this. They give us like maybe like 15,000 or 14,000. It's good. I can buy two or three. You understand? It can work for me to achieve something. But the price they've been calling, I can't even buy even one car. My money too is not enough. You understand the, the price. What, what, what about the uh, apart from the pricing and order? What about today's process? Has there been an improvement in the there process? No, me, I don't see any improvement. Yesterday it be, it, be, it be the same thing. The price they've been calling yesterday because they told us that they are going to think about it when they come today. They will see what they will do about the price. But today they've been they even calling higher more than yesterday's one. Meanwhile, others, however, felt the process can be improved if more information about the vehicles are attached to the projected pictures. 14,000 Ghana cities. No sale. Um, I feel like uh, more details of the vehicles should, could have been displayed for us to know. For instance, you, the cars that are being displayed, you don't know if it's an automatic or manual car because not all of us went to um, the inspection. So. In other news tonight, the Ghana Commercial Agriculture Project with support from Exim Bank has assisted 10 vegetable farmers and agribusiness entrepreneurs to study best practices in vegetable export trade in Kenya. The trip aims to equip them with tools and other modern methods of cultivation vegetables for the European and other foreign markets. The Ghana Commercial Agriculture Project is under the Ministry of Agriculture with support from the Japanese government to revamp the growth of vegetables and other export-oriented products by farmers. The 10 agribusiness entrepreneurs who returned from Kenya had the opportunity to experience from some of the largest producers since Kenya is one of the biggest in vegetable production in Africa. Project coordinator Osewu Suajimai, who led the delegation told Joy Business that the beneficiaries will transfer the knowledge. We're going to use them as a focal point to revamp the vegetable sector. And the government sponsored them. We're also going to give them uh, cold vans and other infrastructure, infrastructure facilities that enable them to provide market access to the vegetable farmers throughout the country. Currently, we are assisting vegetable farmers in Angosikope, in Ada, Hippo, in South Tongu, uh, Michel Camp, in Tema, then uh, Atomic Energy, Atomic Energy in Ga East. Then uh, also we are also looking at assisting farmers in Kumasi to help them to build their capacity in terms of sanitation and marketing. Some of the beneficiaries also added that most of their lessons learned from Kenya will be implemented if the regulatory environment is friendly for their business. Um, they make sure the protocols are in place from the, um, from the farm um, production site to the pack house. You know, they, they ensure that the um, food and safety measures are in place. And these are one of the things that we ensure that when we are producing here in Ghana, we have to enforce. They've got this local standard 
in Kenya called the, the Kenya Standard, in which Ghana, is, I think, have a similar, we have a similar thing called the um, Ghana Green Level. Um, I think when we're able to push that um, um, Ghana Green Label, um, our vegetable sector is going to um, grow big. We also had the opportunity to meet with the standard board over there to have some discussion how they have been able to implement their regulations. They have standards for both exporting um, the vegetables as well as their flowers, as well as the local supplies they do. So we are trying to implement the same thing here in Ghana. Um, we learned a lot from this trip. It's amazing the structures they have in place and the assistant programs they have for the farmers have helped with a huge unemployment um, opportunities over there. So we are hoping we're able to do the same here in Ghana as well. Grateful for your time uh, on business tonight and uh, I'll be back after 8 p.m. And I'm sure you want to know what former finance minister has to say about the Airbus corruption, corruption scandal. Stay tuned. I'll be back after 8 p.m.